Team Cat Mojo. Uh, we got a special episode of Cat Mojo today. Um, I feel a lot of questions about cat nutrition, and I'm glad. Uh, it makes me happy to be able to uh, talk about that body-mind connection with cats. I've been doing that for many, many, many years. And uh, for quite a while now, one of the tools in my toolbox has been felinenutrition.org. And felinenutrition.org really gets into the nitty-gritty about what cats need to eat and uh, what keeps them vital. And uh, uh, I'm really happy to welcome Margaret Gates here today. Uh, Margaret Gates is the founder and director of the Feline Nutrition Education Society. And welcome, Margaret. Hi. It's so good to see you. Tell me a little bit, tell the world a little bit about felinenutrition.org and how you started it. Well, I started it in 2008 uh, after I had attended a, a lecture uh, by a, given by a vet about nutrition. And one of the things she did was she brought in all her equipment and made a batch of raw food right there. And I realized how easy it was. And also how she explained uh, what cats evolved to eat and what they really should be eating, which is a raw meat diet. That's what their whole systems are geared up to do. And uh, I switched all of my cats who were then about a year old onto a raw meat diet. And I was just blown away by the results. Even with cats that were young and healthy, they, they had more energy, their coats got uh, soft and silky, and best of all, the poop doesn't smell at all. Yeah, now I, I, I mean, there is, uh, it's been an uphill battle uh, in terms of uh, advocating a bioappropriate diet for cats. Since you started in 08, are you finding that there's a, a measure of acceptance around raw diet? Acceptance is growing. Uh, yes, the vets are slowly coming around. And one of the things we have found is a lot of people start feeding their cats a raw meat diet after uh, visiting our site or deciding um, on their own to do it. And they end up taking their cats to the vet vets ooh and ah over how healthy their cats are and they you know we've had people that took in 18 year old cats that have been on a raw meat diet and the vet just couldn't believe the cat was 18 years old right. then they reveal you know what they're feeding the cat and a lot of vets you know take a step back and start really thinking about it at that point because they're getting educated by their clients mm -hmm. most vets don't get a lot of uh, education in nutrition and that's part of the problem what it, education they do get is often taught by the pet food companies. Exactly, right. And it's mostly, I've had vets describe this to me, is it was mostly a course in how to prescribe the veterinary prescription diets. Right. It wasn't, you know, about what was best uh, for the cat. So a lot of vets just don't know very much about it. And because of that, they're reluctant. Vets that are a little bit more open-minded are willing to learn from what they're clients are showing them and, right. you know, willing to, to see the results because a raw meat diet can be very effective in helping cats with IBD and diabetes and other diseases, urinary tract problems. And because of that, a lot of people are turning to it and, and trying raw meat diets. And tell me about your light bulb moment. I suddenly realized that, of course, a cat is a cat. They evolved to eat raw meat and the fact that we're feeding them other things is leading to a lot of health problems in there we're feeding cats foods that they did not evolve to eat and it is causing them a lot of health problems uh, especially dry food because cats are obligate carnivores they don't have any requirement for carbohydrates that's one of the things that uh, this vet pointed out and once you point that out to, to people and they suddenly realize what they had been feeding their cat, because we had fed our cats uh, dry food. And once you realize that you're feeding your cat something that they have no business eating, they have no requirement for carbohydrate in all dry food, no matter what the ingredients, even if it's grain free, has, is filled with carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was something I realized that I'd been contributing to my cat's health problems by what I was feeding them. I had assumed that 
because this food is in the stores and it's available, that it was okay for my cat. It's not. Everyone talks about the fact that my grandma fed her cat blank blank. I feed my, my mom fed her cats the dry blank blank and I feed it. And our cats are living to be 20 years old. So their lifespan is just fine. Um, what do you say to people who say that? Yes, some cats do survive into, you know, old age on dry food, but it's still, it's not a healthy food for them. They never tell you whether that cat was having kidney problems, whether it was having any other medical problems, uh, whether it was probably overweight. Um, cats are a lot healthier when they're eating bioappropriate diets. Not every cat is going to have a problem on a, on a dry food diet. Uh, a lot of cats will. And you don't know when you're starting out, you know, whether your cat's going to have a problem. And I always think, why risk it? Right. right. You know, the myth that you can feed a grain free dry and it's great for them. The, the, the whole packaging of grain free. Talk to me about that real quick. Uh, because people started to avoid grains with cats, which are very dangerous to give cats, uh, manufacturers caught on to that and started eliminating grains. All they do is substitute another carbohydrate, some sort of vegetable usually. It's still carbohydrates. It's still dry. Cats don't need carbohydrates and they need to get their most of their liquid in their food, which is why canned or raw diet is more, most important. Tell the folks how they get this information on feline nutrition. Um, if you go to feline-nutrition.org, we have lots of different sections. We have sections on nutrition. It would talk about these prepared diets. We also have a recipe. If you want to make homemade, you need to follow a recipe because cats need meat, bone, and organ in their diet. It can't just be plain meat. That's very deficient. And we have lots of different articles on how to do a, a, a proper raw meat diet, whichever method you're using. Thank you so much, Margaret. You're welcome. Me and you could sit here and talk for six hours, I'm sure. <laughs> and could. hopefully we will sometime. But in the meantime, folks, you know how I feel about a bioappropriate diet. Now you're starting to see that, that it's not such a fringe thing. Feline-nutrition.org. Please go to You'll see the, the link down below. And do what's best for your cat, start thinking, uh, it, you know, uh, is, is that kibble in that bowl really the right thing for your cat? You know, I talk to you guys all the time about structuring mealtime, structure mealtime with at the very least a, uh, a grain free wet diet, but start taking a look at the kind of things you'll find um, with the Feline Nutrition Education Society. Uh, please do it, do what's best for your cat and avoid the learning curve that a lot of us, including me and Margaret, have gone through before. Uh, we're trying to make it so that you don't have to make those tough decisions once your cat is not well. All right, folks, uh, if you want to get in touch with me, and I'm sure you do at this point, this is really interesting stuff, you can find me on Twitter and on Facebook and, and on YouTube, and, uh, and, and, and you can also find Margaret wherever you need to on feline-nutrition.org. Until the next time we meet, all light, all love, all mojo to you. Love you. Mwah! Goodbye. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm just misunderstood. Meow. Yeah.